Hello, everybody. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me that, that opportunity to give uh, my talk today. Uh, so in autonomous systems and surveillance, um, we, we have large volumes of data. Uh, you can think about a UAV, which is flying, for instance, for rescuing operations or um, surveying an area of a whole country. And then we have uh, radar, imagery, GPS and, and other data. And we want to, to help the operators um, so that some of these tasks are performed autonomously, as in the case of a UAV or semi-autonomously. So we need uh, first to detect where the objects of interest are. Then we want to be able to monitor or track their motion. And then we need to, uh, to make some decisions. Uh, is that, for instance, a normal behavior? Is it abnormal? And um, this is always in the context of certain tasks. So uh, today I'm going to talk first about the problems uh, of interest uh, and my current project. Then uh, one of uh, the uh, particular problems we are uh, considering is on Bayesian methods for groups and extended object tracking. However, our understanding about uh, extended objects is slightly more different compared with what Tahir uh, presented today. And finally, I will summarize uh, the key uh, results and uh, discuss uh, future plans. My research group uh, consists of nine uh, researchers at the moment, three postdoctoral researchers and six PhD students. Uh, the three uh, postdoctoral researchers, they are working on a project called BTARET, Bayesian Tracking and Reasoning Over Time. And uh, there is a lot of work that has been done uh, by the tracking community especially for single uh, target tracking. The main uh, challenge of this uh, project is slightly more different. We are uh, interested in groups, so that have some kind of pattern or a coherent kind of uh, motion. Then uh, the second question is, how, t how could we deal with the large volumes of data coming from multiple sensors? And one uh, solution is based on the so-called compressed sensing, which is um, instead of processing all the data uh, online, we can throw part of uh, them uh, as they arrive. There is compressed sensing, as you know, which is the Donohos um, uh, suggested methodology, but Bayesian compressed sensing is more different. Then uh, as part of uh, this uh, kind of uh, groups of problems on complex um, systems, we, we have, uh, uh, first of all, the challenge of modeling um, th such, such a complex system. And um, next, it comes behavior analysis, especially uh, in video. Uh, you can think also about, for instance, a shop uh, where somebody is, is walking in the shop and taking um, something and putting it uh, or in the basket or uh, near to, or stealing. So is the person um, behaving in a normal or abnormal way? And then there is, um, there are a range of problems related with wireless sensor networks. This is uh, a third group of problems we are considering, mainly uh, related with uh, smart cities for localization, for instance, if somebody is a mobile with a mobile phone, uh, how could uh, we find the location of, of that person in a particular area? And the challenges here are different in the sense there is attenuation of the signal, there is multi-path um, and um, yeah, related with um, different uh, applications. This is just a brief overview of uh, my current project. So the EPSRC, the ongoing EPSRC project is with partners, the colleagues from Cambridge. Then uh, I've got uh, an initial 
uh, training network project called Trucks, co uh, Trucking Complex Systems. Uh, I had one uh, called MC Impulse, which uh, actually finished. It was extended till 2014. For trucks, um, I've got as partners Thales, the Netherlands, so they are the, the project lead. Then University of Sheffield, uh, Linköping University from Sweden, uh, Twente University from the Netherlands. Uh, we've got also uh, Fraunhofer Institute, which is a research institute, and uh, four companies. We've got Ericsson, Exens, um, we've got Rinicom, and Thales, I mentioned. So this is actually an amazing opportunity for uh, the partners, for us to work together uh, because the fellows, they are called early stage researchers or uh, they are also uh, um, experienced researchers, uh, we can exchange them between us and then uh, work together. So the topics are different uh, from, from that, starting from modeling the, uh, the complex systems, including also maritime uh, systems uh, like uh, coastal guard uh, modeling. Is the ship um, behaving in a normal, abnormal way? To uh, very methodological problems like studying one of the nonlinear filters of down. Uh, Perhaps you've, you've heard the lock uh, homotopy uh, filter. And I've got uh, some industrial uh, projects, uh, one just finished, uh, funded by Celex Galileo from Data to Knowledge, where the interest of the company is on um, fusion of data and also when the UAV is, is flying about a certain area to be uh, able to, to track large uh, groups of, of objects. I'll show you some uh, results and these are uh, some past projects both on uh, tracking, UC, wireless sensor networks and also control. Vehicular transportation systems is uh, quite a, a fascinating area especially in the light of smart cities where we want to make the city um, resilient to, to changes, for instance, uh, uh, energy or um, uh, any failures due to sensors, to consider pollution, um, to model pollution and possibly predict and inform uh, passengers about that. So let's focus now on, on group and extended uh, object tracking. We have groups in many uh, different applications. Um, first of all, let's think about uh, some biological systems, um, for instance, a flock of birds. But from applied point of view, we want to be able to, to monitor uh, pedestrians uh, as they move in a group. You can think also about the riots in uh, London a couple of uh, years ago where uh, you want to see where the crowd uh, moves and possibly uh, detect uh, and recognize particular people in the crowd. Biomedical systems are quite a big area. Here we have um, cell tracking not only of um, blood cells tracking uh, we can have uh, infectious cells or stem cells or, or other cells. And for rescuing operations, uh, for surveillance, of course, um, uh, ships uh, or, or airplanes, UAVs. So all of us um, and you, um, you are involved in tracking um, single and multiple targets. But groups, they have their own particularities compared with multiple target tracking. And one of them is that they are structured and they move in a coherent way. There is a pattern. Uh, also, groups often merge, split, uh, they can appear, uh, disappear. And um, we want also to be able to estimate the number of uh, groups that are on the scene. In multiple <coughs> target tracking, typically we have motion mod models. Uh, 
so model how the object of interest moves. Then we have a sensor model. Uh, we use our prior knowledge, if we know something about the map, uh, Google map or, or any information about constraints, we can use it. Then we, we have uh, measurements and based on them we can predict the, um, the state in, in the next time moment K. A particularity of the multiple target tracking is that we have uh, multiple data and we have the so-called data association problem or measurement origin uncertainty. So we, we don't know um, which um, data uh, is from which object is, is originated. And we, we develop algorithms for filtering, for prediction. We have to deal with data that are synchronous or, or not. In the group, object motion estimation in addition to uh, to the problems that we uh, have in the um, multiple target tracking we need to be able to uh, estimate somehow the the structure of the group there are various ways of of doing that i'll show you uh, two solutions one one way is for instance we can look at a small group um, like to a random graph where the, the, the nodes of the graph, they correspond to the objects and if there are links between the, the objects then um, th there is a link between the nodes of the graph. So then we, we can uh, estimate um, the structure and possibly predict uh, the motion and uh, interactions. There is also another way, for instance, we can associate um, so-called index variables to each of the individual component of, uh, of the group and possibly uh, track together with the states of the group also these index variables and be able to infer about the, the behavior of, uh, of the group. But there are also other ways and still I would say uh, how to model the the structure of a group um, is an open question. So there are different kinds of groups. From the point of view of the components, uh, we subdivide the groups to small and large groups. So small groups, typically, we, we can consider those groups that are up to 20 components, whereas large groups, uh, we we, we consider something like hundreds and thousands, like, like the crowds. So for small groups, we can estimate the, the position of uh, each of the entities and also um, we, we can estimate the structure of, of the group, whereas for, for large crowds, that's uh, almost impossible or, or a very difficult task. So. Um, there is uh, uh, not only this uh, paper of uh, Ali, but recently there is a book, uh, Springer book, on uh, models for crowds uh, tracking. Uh, this uh, recent survey, which we've written with the colleagues from um, Cambridge, and uh, this is UCL, and from France, it actually surveys the, the current state of the art and presents a classification about uh, the, some of the most important techniques uh, in the area. So many of the models that are developed uh, for the group motion, they are inspired um, from biological systems. So if you think about a flock of birds or a school of fish, uh, they, need in a, they, they move in a very coherent way. They don't collide with each other. They Try to, uh, they try to, um, to be close to each other. So the, the last one is separation, collision avoidance. They usually maintain a certain uh, distance uh, between them. Cohesion is when they tend to move towards the average uh, center or, or position. So uh, this second idea is, um, inspired uh, a number of models, the so-called leader follower. And the third, they tend to align in a certain uh, direction. 
um, so in a certain uh, angle. So uh, apart from the idea about a leader follower, there are other models um, like a spring, mechanical spring, um, or um, for instance, the colleagues from Cambridge, they proposed um, a model with attraction and repulsion forces, starting with stochastic, a stochastic differential, which is quite useful for small groups tracking. There are different kind of versions of the so-called social force models. Uh, the first one uh, proposed by Dirk Helbing in uh, 93 and his group, and further um, modified and improved by different people. The idea uh, is uh, starts from uh, the Newton's laws and uh, dynamics. So the second uh, prob problem related with the groups is extended object tracking. So we don't consider the object as a point, but instead it has some kind of volume, like the ship is a typical example, and the ship can be represented with an ellipse, uh, or typically with an ellipse, where then we want to estimate the minor and the major uh, axis of the ellipse and the center uh, of it or a convoy uh, of cars. Um, so we can have all other kind of um, uh, shapes, not only ellipse, spheres, ellipsoids, or star kind of uh, star shape uh, kind of uh, objects that represent the volumetric uh, representation of uh, the, the object. The challenges with uh, the groups and extended objects uh, come also with the multiple measurements, especially when, when you, you have a surface and then you, we have to associate them. So there is a lot of work, um, both in the area of computer vision, uh, in that area, and in the signal processing and statistical community. I, I mentioned here some, um, some of the works, uh, the, of, of the, the ocean of existing works, but uh, the work of Gilholm and Salmond is uh, quite interesting and pioneering um, for the uh, modeling the spatial distribution. Then the group in Fraunhofer, what they do is they consider the extent as a random matrix. So they uh, estimate the uh, position, uh, speed, acceleration of the object, but together uh, with that is how, how big it is. Um, so this is a very um, powerful approach. Uh, that's the other group from Karlsruhe. This is one of our work uh, works uh, on... Uh, um, with sequential Monte Carlo methods. There is another very big uh, group of methods with random finite set. This is the so-called probability hypothesis density filters. But I'm not going to uh, go into details. Uh, this is just from the survey where we've got um, a view about the challenges. Um, so for small groups, we can do much more than uh, for, for large groups because for uh, small groups, we can use, for instance, uh, if we have video data, different kind of image features, color, texture, edges, motion, and estimate the uh, movement of each individual person and the structure, whereas for large groups, we simply don't have enough information from the sensors to um, to estimate each position of, of the object. And seen in general, uh, this is a, both problems are uh, problems of state and parameter estimation. So this is another example of tracking a radioactive uh, uh, cloud. Uh, that's, uh, these are data from a LiDAR. Uh, this is what um, the image looks like. Then we have the true uh, concentration, that's concentration of the radioactive cloud that's in time. And this is what the estimated uh, cloud looks like. Um, similarly to the groups, it is a challenge uh, here again when uh, the 
the, the cloud starts splitting or when, when there are uh, cases of, of merging. So for, let's say, the purposes of measuring pollution, we want to know how, how big the pollution is um, and uh, it's, it's valuable to estimate uh, its size. Okay, regarding um, modeling the interactions, there are different levels of difficulties. One is within each group, because um, if you think about uh, pedestrians, uh, they, they can move together, they can overlap and um, interact. But then we have another level, which is interaction between the groups uh, when, when they cross. Um, they uh, split and uh, merge. For large groups tracking, uh, the problem is uh, commonly considered as a clustering problem. So instead of uh, uh, considering each uh, component, we one considers only the center and, and the volume. Um, so uh, that's just to illustrate how the one particular example would look like. Imagine we have two groups. Uh, this is one group of uh, entities one, two, and three. This is time. We have another group with three entities. What is uh, an empty circle? No, that's the empty circle. This is noise. This is clutter. Uh, this means that the measurement is not originating from the objects, but instead from the environment. So. From time t to time t1 to time t2, um, for instance, um, object one from group two uh, migrates, uh, and then we have from group one this object separates these to form a group. This is another group, and this is another group. So we from two we have three groups. Then from gr uh, time t2 to t3. Uh, again, uh, there is a change in the positions and there are two groups and here we, we've got clutter. So that's just to illustrate um, the, what, what we need um, to be able to model, um, especially for, um, for small groups. And if we use the attraction and repulsion uh, uh, forces. Um, there, there are results and also we, we can uh, make inference not only about the, the leadership but also about the, the behavior. Uh, so these works, uh, this work in particular is based on the leader-follower kind of model and uh, there is a sequential Monte Carlo kind of methods uh, that, that are developed for uh, for tracking. So, how did we uh, propose uh, in our work to model the structure of a small group? Um, we consider random graphs. So, we have graphs uh, or random networks, uh, I would say, everywhere. If you think about uh, uh, a communication network or sensor network. This is also a kind of a random graph. If you think of um, world uh, of, of the internet, so this is another example, and Twitter. And um, in our work, we uh, add a new node if there is an appearance of an object or we remove uh, a node um, and edges if uh, some of the uh, objects uh, disappear. Or, um, uh, for instance, um, link with the literature that's um, similarly uh, to the preferential uh, networks that uh, uh, exist. So, uh, what we've done, we've taken that idea about the, the random graph um, and we combined it with sequential Monte Carlo, in particular uh, particle filtering, um, and we estimate both the state and the graph. 
Are you actually familiar with uh, sequential Monte Carlo methods with particle filters? One person. Anybody else? No? Two. Thank you. Um, this is a kind of uh, method that works well with nonlinear uh, systems and start starting with a guess where, let's say, the group is in, in a time moment, we, we can predict um, how the, the group can evolve. So, um, and we proposed a mechanism of splitting and merging uh, based also on, on the distance, um, in this case, Mahalanobi's distance between uh, the the entities. If an entity is like here, in, initially we, we have uh, a graph, but if in a moment one of the entities is further apart from, from the others, then we can initiate a new, a new uh, group. Or the other way around, if we have two different groups, but in a moment they become too close to each other, then um, we, we decide that there is a merge uh, in, in the group. More or less, that's uh, the uh, idea, and it requires also uh, to take into consideration not only the distances between the objects, but as you see here, we, we know where the center of, of the group is, uh, then we consider the, the distances between the two centers and the, the other entities. So if I have to um, just um, summarize the idea uh, of the method, I'm not going to give you details, they are in the papers, but uh, what we are doing is estimation, model-based, so we have a model, an approximate model, how uh, the object could move in the case of, of a crowd we can assume uh, a model that covers all kinds of possible motions, not only straight line, but uh, it could be a turn, acceleration, or, or running. So that's the nonlinear state dynamics equation. Then we have a measurement equation. In the case of uh, video, we are using features, different kind of uh, low-level features like color, texture, motion, edges, um, and then, based on these two kinds of models, we want to um, estimate uh, the state um, x, x is and the, the structure, so we have the measurements, and in the Bayesian framework we have uh, the prediction step, which is this uh, integral known as chapman kolmogorov equation. It's difficult to solve it analytically, that's why there are um, a range of numerical techniques to solve it, and this is the, the likelihood uh, function. So practically, this is the, no, that's the Bayesian rule, that's the likelihood function, sorry, and that's the, the prior, and that's the uh, evidence. So these two are uh, solved uh, recursively, and then they, they give us the, the solution. In the case with the graph, we are estimating not only the position and um, speed, as I uh, mentioned to you, of each individual uh, component of the group, but we also uh, estimate the, the graph structure. So we form one big uh, vector, which uh, contains all the uh, states for all uh, entities, so that's the big, uh, and this is our augmented uh, state uh, vector. Again, I'm, I'm giving just uh, a brief idea. We are applying the, uh, the Bayesian rule um, and deriving uh, the equation with respect to the state and, and the graph. And if we assume independent measurements, which is actually uh, the case, we have an expression for, uh, for the transition prior, and we have also an expression for, for the likelihood as a product of the likelihoods uh, for 
separate measurement depending on on the state of the um, of the subgroup or or the whole group. So that's uh, uh, briefly the, the particle filter. And in addition, we, we can improve the algorithm performance with uh, MCMC kind of uh, steps. Here we have Metropolis Hastings. So first of all, we have prediction. We don't know where the group is, but we spread particles all over the, the area of interest. Then we push the cloud through the Mm, the function, the, the proposal distribution, um, then we get the prediction. Then once we have the video, we update our knowledge about the uh, state and then we can find um, the, uh, the current state uh, estimate. And in addition, we can accelerate with Metropolis Hastings. This is just a detail to show the model, the so-called constant uh, acceleration model, where we have two Gaussian components for the noise in order to have the slow motion and the um, abrupt motion. So, um, and that's with uh, radar data, where we we measure the, the range. Range is measured and, and bearing. So at that time, when we uh, worked on the project, um, Kinetic were very kind to provide us with real data. Uh, the real data were collected in Bristol. So two groups of vehicles. Um, so you see two vehicles moving like that and two other vehicles like that. So. This is the range. Uh, what you see around this is clutter, so re, um, reflection from from the um, environment. So the vehicles were moving on the ground, but um, there was a, heli a helicopter uh, with um, a radar uh, that collects uh, the data and uh, provided them to us. So that's the the bearing. So the challenge is. Um, they, they are noisy. Uh, we don't know, uh, for instance, um, which car uh, initiated the, the measurement. So uh, with, I'm reading a little bit slower, uh, that's, that's the result for, for, the, um, for the estimated coordinates. With simulated data, uh, we we also estimated the number of the components of the group. So what you see here is, again, two groups, they, they merge and then in a moment they split. So we, we have uh, a variable number of, um, of uh, the components of the group, that's the simulated, and that's what is obtained by the algorithm. Uh, in the overview paper, uh, we put also links to, um, to the code we developed for uh, some of the, the algorithms, especially for, for the group uh, with evolving networks. Um, so, uh, we can improve the uh, performance of the particle filter if we have some better uh, algorithms like Markov chain, Mo Monte Carlo, so practically we move particles in a, um, in a better uh, area. But uh, I'm not going to go in details. So uh, extended object tracking is a similar problem. So for instance, um, we, we had um, an example, this is a wireless network and uh, an extended object is moving um, like a car and then we, we are estimating the center and the, um, how, how big uh, it is. So in, in that case, we, we start with a similar motion model, um, but instead of a graph, we are estimating the parameters of the shape. 
And uh, in the work I'm going to show, it, it's mainly um, simpler shapes like rectangle or ellipse or uh, we've done it with um, um, yeah, mainly with uh, ellipse and uh, circles, but the next step would be uh, to do it with some kind of deformable shapes where um, the surrounding uh, area is uh, different. What are the some of the challenges when we have a birth of, um, of a group? Uh, we can um, we can have the so-called birth and death models. Um, what we focused on was in particular when there is data association. Um, we don't know uh, which which object originated the measurements, and we developed the so-called box particle filter, which is uh, useful uh, when. Um, uh, we, we don't know the parameters of the measurements. They are inaccurate. How much time do I have, uh, Andrea? 10 minutes? Because I, I, have, I have slides, but... So we developed the so... The, the part of the box filter is interesting. So. Okay, I'll, I'll show a bit of results without going into details. So when... The, whereas the particle filter um, represents a PDF, so we want to find an estimate of an object based on the video, for instance. Uh, the way the uh, PDF is represented is based on um, this empirical approximation with delta functions. Whereas the box particle filter um, says we are going to work with a box which is like an infinite number of particles um, on and graphically this is the representation um, one th th that uh, formulation has several advantages we can reduce the complexity compared with the classical particle filter which needs thousands of particles whereas here we work with dozens also, it is more robust to uh, uncertainty in, uh, in the measurement uh, error, and we show uh, it's, it's quite uh, efficient. So instead of working with point estimates, we, uh, we will obtain uh, interval estimates, and at the end, we can take the center if we want to have a point estimate. So our state function, as you see, both the state and the noise, everything is intervals. And for the measurements, for instance, uh, often acoustic sensors or uh, radar data, we, we don't know the measurement noise. We can assume it within an uncertainty, like three, three sigma uh, region, and work with, with it. So seen from the top, how does it work? Similarly to the particle filter, we spread particles initially, and there are intervals, there are boxes. Uh, then this, the cloud with boxes, it is passed through the nonlinear function, which is the state function. So that's the prediction step. In general, that nonlinear function uh, can lead to something that is not a box. So think about this F if it is... So instead of a box, at the end we can have like a very uh, shapeless figure, for instance. So these are our initial boxes where the, the object is. We have a function F, but after that we can have very different kind of shapes because this is nonlinear. So what we do is some kind of inclusion function, take the minimum box that surrounds the uh, predicted uh, shapes in order to have a box. So that's our prediction step. So 
So the difference compared with the classical particle filter is the presence of um, that inclusion function. And the measurement update step, um, it does, uh, what it does, it finds the intersection between the uh, predicted uh, particles with the measurements. So these are the measurements, these are the predicted particles uh, for the state where there is an intersection, then this particle is propagated further. If there is no intersection between the box for the measurement and uh, the state, then this is clutter. And that intersection is based on a function which is called contraction. So I'll show you some results. This is an example from Celex ES. So they are interested in um, algorithms for UAV um, platforms and uh, this represents a stadium. So this is a crowd of uh, people. Um, there is a sensor that uh, gives data but the sensor gives also lots of reflections. So these, these dots that are spread all over the, these are uh, clutter points. That's not then the, the crowd moves through this narrow region and the, the task is to be able to, to localize the, the crowd and then continue further as, as it goes. So what we show here with the box particle filter is an estimate of the center of the crowd and also how big the crowd is. So the, the two sizes of the rectangle we, we show the interval, the intervals, the min and max, but uh, if we want to, to have the, the center, we can always take uh, the central part. So uh, measurement is the black, um, box estimate is, is the blue. So it is mis a little bit misled at the beginning when it goes through this narrow region, but after that uh, the result is, is quite good. Nevertheless, there is some noise and you see the, the noise can be uh, is all over the places. We did um, some work, I'll show you uh, mainly the, the videos then, with a filter which is called convolution filter, which does not need necessarily to have a likelihood function um, in an explicit form. So these are some kind of, uh, they are called likelihood free model uh, algorithms. So you don't have uh, a form for necessarily for it. So what we see here with that filter is um, a case um, again with uh, lots of clutter, so that's noise, and then this is the crowd. It's difficult to visually to distinguish which is um, uh, the, the crowd and which is the noise. So that's with the convolution filter. This one uh, is, is an ongoing work uh, and uh, you see at some places not, not all the um, group members are well uh, incorporated so it depends how accurately the, um, the parameters of the crowd are estimated. Let me see, our, one of our recent works is on tracking with the social force model combined with a particle filter. So uh, we studied two different ways of um, uh, using the social force model. One is at the prediction step of the filter where you can um, have a better prediction where the, um, the crowd is or uh, another way in the likelihood of the filter. But as a result, I can uh, mention that 
in the prediction step is uh, it works better. So we um, we started with the um, model of uh, Dirk Helbing. We model the, the repulsion and and um, uh, driving forces, P is position of, of the IT at object, V is the velocity, delta T is time, F is force, M is mass. So for small groups, um, that kind of uh, model uh, can be uh, quite um, promising uh, if we want to model especially and deal with occlusions and interactions. Uh, I, I'm not going into details. Um, just to show you, uh, it's not uh, going to work for large groups, but for small it is good. For instance, for uh, three object, uh, objects, we will have um, NS is the, the, the size of, um, of the vector, state vector, t to the power of L links. So we have a lot of combinations and we evaluate the distances and at the end uh, we can predict the uh, interactions between them. I, I will show you some results. These are on public, I think, PETS data sets, where at some points the uh, objects they occlude. This one is detected, if you see it again, this one is detected as two and is tracked as two objects. In the other video, we have um, a place yeah, now where there is occlusion, and nevertheless, the um, the social force model is quite useful to to deal with such occlusions. We recently published uh, two books. This uh, one they are edited, but they uh, contain. Uh, uh, results for one of um, uh, the streams of uh, leader follower uh, kind of algorithms related with MCMC. So if I have to summarize, um, so we developed and we continue uh, developing of uh, methods for both small and large uh, groups uh, with uh, different kind of uh, filters box particle filters, the so-called likelihood uh, uh, free uh, filters. We, we would like to uh, do more on irregular shapes uh, where like star shapes or, or something um, yeah, like that. Groups merging and splitting, we, we have results, although I, I didn't show, but uh, we've done some works. Uh, still, uh, there is more to be done on um, high dimensionality kind of problems where we want to estimate the states of hundreds or thousands of vectors. So at the moment what we've done, we reduce the, the uh, complex problem into um, l low dimensional, whereas uh, it's still unresolved if we have thousands of problems uh, of, of states. The other way of dealing with um, high uh, volumes of data, as I mentioned, is to throw them in real time instead of processing uh, them, which um, we are working on uh, Bayesian compressed sensing and related uh, with, with video data, related with behavior uh, analysis. Um, although a lot has been done for object detection, uh, we also have uh, results with static cameras. Uh, there is a lot of room for moving cameras, especially think about the UAV, and there is uh, jittering of the camera. So one uh, solution in the literature is to estimate the motion of the camera and then remove it uh, somehow, uh, take it into consideration. Um, but Th there is a scope uh, for, for UV purposes. Pedestrian uh, motion modeling uh, is another area we are uh, currently working on. And uh, inference, yeah, kind of problems. So, sp 
special thanks also to our sponsors that made this work possible. Okay, thank, thank you. you.